Sometimes grief can cloud our vision or our thinking to the point where we don't recognize where Jesus is at in the situation. And in those moments, I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit because he can break in and remind us that he's right there with us, that he comes to where we're at and he sits alongside of us and he never leaves us alone. We see that picture here and we see Mary Magdalene in her grief, recognize him because he speaks to her. All this and more. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. And I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand his will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, before we get into today's episode, I have a quick word. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org. And for a limited time, I'm offering all of my podcast listeners a special discount of 20% off. You can use the discount code hearing Jesus. That's one word, all caps, to get your discount. There are also some free videos and a leader's guide for you to get started. Again, head to shehears.org and you can find the Bible study on the resources page. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today's day four of the Mary Magdalene study, and we are coming out of John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And just as a reminder, these are all devotional thoughts that are coming out of the larger She Hears Bible study. It's a six-week study on women in the life of Jesus. You can get that on my website at shehears.org or pretty much anywhere books are sold. So I'm going to go ahead and read, and then we'll pick up with today's color method that I want to talk about a little bit. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen clothes lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen clothes lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded up by a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know it was Jesus. She said, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he said these things to her. This is John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, and today we were reading from the ESV. Again, we're changing up versions a lot this week just to give you some varied perspective. So today, one of the things that we would have been looking at if you were doing the larger Bible study would have been underlining or highlighting any divine acts of God. So either moves of the Holy Spirit, anything supernatural, those would be highlighted in blue. And I like doing that because it helps us see and understand the things that can only happen by the hand of God. And so some of the things that you would see in this passage if you were doing the color method would be things like the stone rolling away from the tomb, the linen clothes lying, lying there, um, because obviously they wouldn't be there if Jesus hadn't risen from the dead. So I included that. Um, the, the extra cloth being folded up and placed by itself. He rose from the dead. Two angels. The angels speaking, woman, why are you weeping? She sees Jesus standing. Obviously, that's a supernatural thing. Jesus said to her, "Why, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Any of these words that we see Jesus saying is supernatural because he has just risen from the dead. Obviously, it's supernatural. Jesus said to her, Mary, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I'm ascending to the Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. I love all of that. And I think when we... Focus in on the actual event that is happening here. There's a couple aspects that I want to make sure you don't miss. If you haven't found it, if you've been doing your own personal study throughout this week and, and doing some cross-referencing, I hope you have found it. But if you didn't, just one chapter back in John 19, um, verse 25. If you missed that, you can go ahead and look it up. But it says, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Now, depending on the version that you're reading, um, the names of this are switched. And so that kind of flips what I was, was saying yesterday about her age. But when you're talking about these kinds of things, you have to look at the at the original text. And so the, the position of her name would have been in the, the Greek and the Hebrew. So anyway, what we learn here is that Mary Magdalene was one of the women that was present at the cross. So while our narrative today is about the resurrection, you have to think about this in terms of what's been going on in her life this week. She was present. She was one of the women present at the cross. And so it's very interesting to me that almost all of the male disciples are not mentioned in the final moments of Jesus. We don't have them placed at the scene of the crucifixion. We have no record of where they went or where they were at. But what we do know is that Mary Magdalene was present. And I don't know if you remember this, but we talked about it earlier in the study about women being a, a witness. The testimony of women did not hold up in the Jewish court system. The, the women's testimony was not valid in that culture. Yet one of the witnesses, the key witnesses of the death of Jesus, and then later the first witness to the resurrection was a woman. This is identified in all four Gospels, and I want you to realize there's some power here. Jesus values the testimony of women. Regardless of what other larger establishments value, regardless of what different denominations value, regardless of what your organizational strat status is, Jesus values the testimony of women. And that is the filter we need to be looking through. So as we look at this final scene together, I hope it's become more and more clear to you that not only does Jesus value women, but he chooses to use them to do kingdom work. This next part I love, and this is what I want you to kind of meditate on tonight. We watch Mary come face to face with Jesus. And though initially her eyes don't recognize him in her grief. Verse 14 says that. But the scripture says she recognizes him 
when he calls her name. She recognizes him because of his voice. A couple years ago, um, I had I, I was raised by my grandparents, and a couple years ago, my grandmother had um, taken a really bad fall and had a brain bleed, and had, she had fallen down the stairs, and it was terrible. And so I got the call very late at night. I think it was around midnight. And it was really, she didn't end up dying until like a week later. But at the time, it was really pressing that I get to the hospital because we thought that these were going to be her final moments. And I wanted to get to the hospital before she died and to be able to just tell her that I love her. And I've shared this story before, but I think it's relevant here. As I was driving up, it was the middle of the night, so my husband stayed home with the kids, and I was driving up. We live about 45 minutes to an hour away from the hospital. I remember just in my grief being so overwhelmed, and I was driving, in the, of course, in the driver's seat, and the passenger seat was empty, and I remember just like praying and, and even reaching my hand out. I don't know what I thought was happening. Like maybe there would be some sort of manifestation or something. I, I don't know. So I was even reaching my hand out like Jesus was sitting in that passenger seat. And I just kept praying over and over, I need you. Lord, I need you. And I was so overwhelmed with my grief. I just kept praying that over and over again. Like, Lord, I need you. I need you. And even just reaching my hand over there. And in one of the most clear the most clear times of my life, the Holy Spirit said, I'm not over there. I'm right here. And when he said that, it reminded me that he's, he's in my heart. He's, he's, he's not over there. There is no separation between me and him, but it wasn't till he spoke that I recognized his voice because my grief clouded my judgment or my knowledge of him, because I think there's a difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. And in my grief, I could not access the head knowledge, but in my grief, he spoke. And when he spoke, it became heart knowledge. See, I think that's what's happening here. Mary is overwhelmed with her grief. And so at first she doesn't recognize his presence. I could not recognize his presence in that car with me that day. I was looking for him somewhere where he was not not realizing that he was closer than I could have realized. I think that's what's going on here. She is overwhelmed with her grief because remember, he's divine, she's not. He's supernatural, she's human. So she is overwhelmed with grief and and can't remember the things that he said and and you know, none of them can remember really what he had said. But when he speaks, she recognizes his his voice. That's what she hears him. Do you get it? The deepest longing of our hearts is to hear God's voice. And I want that for you. I want you to recognize him when he calls your name, when he speaks to you. I want you to recognize that. That's why I did this Bible study. That's why I'm doing this podcast. That's why I teach and preach around the country, because I want you to know him. I want you to hear him and recognize his voice so that when he speaks, you hear God, thank you for my friends and the way that they have committed to learning how to recognize your voice. God, I thank you that you are a God that breaks through the grief, the sorrow, the pain. You break in and you speak through your Holy Spirit to us. God, help us to listen. Help us to listen and to know the difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. God, we want a heart knowledge kind of interaction with you. God, I pray that even right now, You would break in and break through the things that are clouding the vision of my friend and you would speak in a way that they can hear. God, I thank you that you meet us where you're at, where we're at, and that you don't ever leave us alone. There's never a separation. You're not over there. You're right here. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you and praise you in all things. Amen.
Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Randy. And we're from Salty Saints Podcast. We're a theology and apologetics podcast. To find out more, subscribe at lifeaudio.com.